Something that I say along the way will touch you. I know it. Let's begin that process of crafting a meaningful life. Here's Mary Crafts. Good morning and welcome back to Crafting a Meaningful Life. I'm your host, Mary Crafts, and always so delighted to come to you because this is the little bit of time that I get to share with you one-on-one, just you and me, and sometimes a guest, which we have today. And I get to like talk about what's going on in our lives, what's going on in my life, because the thing I've learned after, I think this is like maybe episode 278 or nine, somewhere in there, what I've learned is the commonality between all of us, this sense of oneness that we have. And that if something is happening in my life, I can rest assured it's been happening in one of yours at some point in time. And maybe you got through it, maybe you understood it, maybe you grew from it, or maybe you're still stuck in it. But as we talk about those things, we increase our awareness and our ability to improve the best version of ourselves. As I was thinking about that the other day, about being my best version, it was kind of this, oh my gosh, idea when I thought, you know what? I... In this life, I'm never going to be my best version because it's always growing. It's always expanding. It's always shifting. And so I'm excited to see who that next version is today. This is early morning. I got the whole day yet to improve my best version. So I'd like to welcome you today to one of my dear friends who I think is living in a parallel universe to me except we have about 30 different years in our age. But other than that, we live in the same parallel universe. And I am so delighted you will absolutely fall in love with him. Harry Amar, welcome, welcome to our podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here and so grateful. Everybody listening, I just want to vouch for Mary in real life. If you've never met her, she is real. She is loving. She is a leader. Um, I was just, we were just chatting before this and I I know sometimes like, you know, if you're a podcast listener and you haven't met the person, she is who she, you, what you hear is what you see. And uh, it's a blessing to know you. It's a blessing to witness your light when, whenever I am blessed to be in a room with you. And I just want to thank you for who you are and the goodness you put into this world. So I, I wanted to publicly share that with your listeners that you are authentic and have ginormous heart. And um, I'm just so blessed to know you. So thank you for having me. Right back at you, Henry. Like I said, parallel universes. Mm, because we are same, same. We are same heart. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with age. And that I'm very clear about. You can have this kind of growth and enlightenment uh, in your teenage years, yeah. in your 20s, in your 30s. You could wait to, like I did until you're 50 and then start down this road and knowing that at 69, I'm just getting started. That's right. Or you can be like you and have come to this understanding so much earlier in life. Oftentimes when I, when I speak and I'm in a room and afterwards, you know, you have the people come up to you and how much they are awake. And I look at them and they're like 29. Mm. I think, wow, just think who you are today mm. and who you are going to be when you're my age. Wow. It's funny. I, whenever somebody asks me, how old are you? I'm like, do you want to know mentally, emotionally, spiritually, or physically? Because I feel like they're all so different. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> life experiences, what you've been through, what's going on in your life and how you've dealt with it. It's just, it's so interesting. But yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I, I really feel like, I don't know, maybe this is always a thought, but I feel like this next generation too, maybe it's because of the I think we grow under pressure. We grow under yeah, yeah. our environment and there's, and like we pass wisdom on, right? Like there's a lot of information on social media or whatever. The internet has dynamics, right? But I just feel like there is an enlightenment happening among all generations right now. And I feel like there's a calling to people yeah. to step forward and to embody their light, embody their gifting, embody um, beyond all the, the mind stuff. And, you know, how do we break free from that? And it's really cool to witness people stepping into it, whether they're like 13 or whether they're 99, yeah. you know, it's really fascinating to witness. It's exciting. It's such an exciting time. It is incredible. It reminds me, of course, of the old adage. I think Charles Dickens has, it said, it's the best of times. It's the worst of times. Yeah. And that's not new. We think it's new, but it's not. It's how every age of humankind existence on this planet has grown through the worst of times 
enlightenment happened. Yeah. Through the dark ages and some of the worst, most cruel parts of our existence came the Renaissance. Yeah. Came the enlightening. Um, through you know the tyr- tyranny of Britain. And then because of that, the United States was born. Mm-hmm. And the birth of that freedom. So as people are like, oh my gosh, these pe- we're, we're in such trouble. There's there's more teenage suicide. There's more this than more this. You know, COVID than it ever has been before. We're, we're on the age, on the brink of destruction. And I'm like, no, no, we're on the brink of birth. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And, and, and it's really cool because if someone's listening to your podcast or, and listening to this, there's something inside of them that knows there's something else. That yeah. knows there's hope. Like you you know, you, we attract what we're, what we're involved with and your vision yeah. is, is so attracting. So if you're listening to this, there's something in you. It's such a demonstration of hope and self-love and everything, because you're listening to something that is intentional to help you grow and embody what that is. And if you think about it, I, I, we had an event in LA. Um, it, it was basically a dinner for people that are on the, I call it the front lines to do good, right? Yeah. Who are on the front lines. And so we had the most amazing people. We had some big music artists. We had music executives. We had entrepreneurs. It was just different groups of people, people that are like on the front lines. And I thought, let's just bring people together. And one of them comes up to me and goes, Henry, when it's darkest in the room, even if there's a little light, you're going to notice it. And right now, even though in the world it feels, it could feel like there's so much darkness, even if we just step into our light, it's going to be something that people get a chance to witness. And it brings so much comfort to a room, even if you have a nightlight. That's why sometimes we have that. And and I just, I am so grateful for anybody listening to podcasts like yours and, and following you, Mary, because if you spot it, you got it right? What you see in Mary, what you see in other people that you're like, I love that. I wish I could be that confident. I wish I could be that courageous. I wish I could just shine my light. Like if you see it in somebody else, it's because it's already inside of you. It it already (laughs) is you. I can't tell you how many times I have told that to people on this podcast, but also after every time I speak or have that interaction, people come up, I'm sure just like to you. And they do this someday when I grow up, I hope to be like you. And I hope this, and you are so amazing. And they start even with all this stuff. And I grab them by the shoulders and I look at them until I know they're listening to me. And I say, what you see in me already lives in you. Yes. Or you wouldn't see it in me. That's right. And they, They look at me with this sense of doubt, but I keep holding them Mm -hmm. until they (laughs) see it. And then you know that moment where they're like, and they start this and they start to weep yeah, because they finally, for the first time, see what's already there. But the reverse is also true, Henry. Yeah. Yep. If people look at me and say, oh, she's such a narcissist, such a, a whatever, you know, they see that in me. Because that is what is currently pushing forward in them. Yeah. And it, so it's it's a real mere wake up call to what you're seeing in people. Yeah. What a beautiful thing to like be able to use both for our benefit, to be able to recognize my strengths, but also know that how I judge you is how I judge myself. Yes. And and if I'm harshly judging you, it was funny. I was I've, I've been on this kick of like I, I mean I'm always listening to personal development stuff. And, and there's been some uh, on a kick of like, how do you create abundance in every area of your life, right? Every area. And I'm stretching myself to new limits. Like, what are my next level? Like, what is the, on the other side of the fears I have now? Cause new level, new devil. Right. Mm-hmm. And I thought the, the, the common message of all these people that I look to and I'm like, man, they're crushing it. All of them have said, be careful how you judge the person in success because if you are looking at them as this this opportunity like for hope and yes excitement but if you're judging them in that space be careful because that's how you'll judge yourself and you're going to sabotage the growth that you could have i heard this story it was a really really funny story this guy was like i really wanted to be so successful and right now he's extremely successful right like playing and everything right and he's like there was a moment i had no money and he's like a, a, a I was on the sidewalk and a Lamborghini pulled up and stopped at the red light. And I started dancing around it. And I asked the guy if I could pay for his gas, even though it was like all the money that I had. 
And the guy's like, dude, I have a Lamborghini. Like, why would I need you to pay for my gas? He goes, because you showed me what's possible and you gave me hope. And you thank you so much for living out your dreams and who you are. And he's like, that energy changed him. And so he was like, because how you judge other people is how you judge yourself. And so be aware of that dialogue because most likely it's just a mirror, as you said, Mary. And it's not to beat yourself up because, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm judging other people harshly. It's, it's an opportunity to lovingly look at and get, as Gabor Mati says, have compassionate curiosity about where am I at right now? Because if I can navigate, understand where I'm at, where I want to be, then I can create the bridge to get there. And so what a, what a great mechanism for information for our own personal growth. You know, I look back to, uh, that's the great thing about being nearly 70 is you get to look back a long ways. <laughs> And as I look back, I think how um, I was pretty asleep until mm -hmm. age 50. And even though I was very successful in business, I had a family on the outward appearance, looked like Mary, you know, had it together kind of thing. But I hadn't yet turned the light in. Mm -hmm. And when I finally did that, of course, at first it was rather scary. But as I kept the light in there yeah, and you begin to see ah, it's all that shadow that I've been carrying that has now led me to this point and the shadow became so painful that I could say, okay, I'm going to shift. <laughs> yeah. Let's shine over here on the light that's here. And as I began to bring them together to learn to love each other mm. and appreciate each other. In fact, this just happened to me a couple months ago. I was listening to a podcast by Oprah Winfrey. And uh, she's a longtime hero of mine. We, we kind of grew up it, at the same time. I think we're mm -hmm. almost the same age. And she was talking about how that she had learned to truly love herself. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, got that. Okay, truly love. And then she went on to say, she said, but I don't mean truly love myself now. I mean, I've gone back mm. and truly loved all those women yes. and those young girls who grew up. And I, I was just like shaking almost, mm. Henry. I, I was like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. I love this person. Yeah. Well, I don't love that person and yeah. I'm not going to love that person. That's why I did all this was to get away from it. And it just, and I sat down in my chair in my bedroom and I just, I was like, I don't know how to do that. And as I felt into it and I saw all that shadow, mm -hmm. I was able to slowly put my arms around myself and, and hold myself. Mm -hmm. And envision that woman at 284 pounds and envision all of her hurt. Mm -hmm. And suddenly what I felt was so much gratitude. Thank you. And just being aware of her, thank you for going through that to bring me to where I am today. Yeah. Thank you for seeing that through and learning what grit and resilience was. You are a freaking amazing woman you were, right. even though I wasn't in love with her. And now you can look back and say, wow, thank you, Shadow. Yeah. Thank you for bringing me here. Yeah. I love you. Wow. That was like a whole new awakening for me. That is yeah. humongous. It's interesting. It's so profound in, in so many ways, there's there's a model of of healing trauma that I I, I love. It's um, I was talking to Dr. Frank Anderson. He's one of the leaders of internal family systems, and they're incredible. And their whole model is learning to look inward to the younger parts of you and learning to love them into wholeness and into healing because the etymology of healing is wholeness and bringing those younger yes. parts of you into where you are now. And so what you're saying is is so profoundly healing. If you you know. Uh, you think about love and love is the healer. Love is the transcender, you know, and um, whether people believe in, in God listening or not, it's like, you know, in different religions and different spiritual teachings, they say God is love. And if God, if A equals B, then B equals A. If God equals love, then love equals God. And if we want to talk about healing, the only way to heal is to love. And if we love the parts of ourselves that we don't like, that's when we bring it into wholeness. And I love that so much. And 
the, the profound experience of being able to go back and look at the, the younger part of yourself and mm. recognize how resilient and strong she was. And, and man, like it changes yeah. so much. That is so cool that you had that experience. How did you, how did you feel after? Like what changed in your life? I'm so curious to how that, that, that transcended. Like how, how did it um, show itself after? Well, thank you, podcast interviewer. I'll answer your question. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I asked you. I get really curious. I'm like, I, I literally had a question earlier and I was like, Henry, it's not your podcast. It's Mary's. No. Don't ask her because I'm really curious. About, I'm like, Mary, this is amazing. Like, this is so profound. It's really big because I think if everybody listening can just say, how can I learn to love the parts of myself that I don't like, the younger version of myself that I don't like, and recognize that you can't beat yourself up into healing and you can't, you can't look back. What you resist will persist. And it's interesting when we look at that younger part of ourself, what they really wanted was acceptance and love the whole time. So if I look back at my younger self and reject him, or if you reject her, yeah. what you're doing is the same thing that caused her so much pain or him so much pain. What they were looking for is love and acceptance. So let me be the one to go back and give that to them so I could heal them into who I am today. So I, I just want to say that the reason that struck me so funny in all these five years I've been doing this, no one has ever asked me a question back. So really? I'm like, I have, I have to ask a, answer a question. So I have so many you. questions for you. <laughs> thank you. So the immediate thing is I sat there and I just, I actually began to rock myself mm. and just hold myself and realized how often I had yearned just to be rocked. Mm. and just so much appreciation. So the first thing that changed inside me was something I didn't anticipate was gratitude. Wow. So much gratitude for me. The second thing was forgiveness. Mm. It's beautiful. I didn't have to hold her in disdain or like, how could you have been that way or blah. It was just this total love and forgiveness. I could forgive myself for those mistakes because they were me. There no longer existed in me at that moment a line mm. between dark and light. There no longer existed me a there and then and a here and now. Wow. This sense of oneness, the journey of seeing that, this, I, I was thinking back to the little girl and, and, and even her, I didn't like, I'm like, <laughs> it's like, but it was gone. Yeah. Wow. It's so much love and appreciation for me. And I can't remember the name of the movie. I will in just a minute that you'll know this movie with, um, uh, Bruce Willis, where he goes, his little, his little, his self comes to him. And oh my gosh, you know that movie? I do. I'm trying and to. And he hated the little kid. He goes, yeah. You're me. I hated you. You were this. You were snivelly. You were this. You couldn't do the how to do this. You couldn't throw a ball. You, you, he goes, Why are you with me now? And then he had to come to this point of, realizing that they were the same. And mm. as they held each other by the airplane at the end, he, he said, well, I would go back and say to myself then, you grow up okay, kid. Wow. The kid, that's what it's called, the kid. Oh yeah, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> you grow up okay, kid. Mm. And if we could all go back and tell ourselves, guess what? You grow up okay, kid. And I would, that's why I, when I talk, and especially to young women, I tell them, I said, you grow up okay. In the end, you get to be a badass and That's people right. love you <laughs> <laughs> because yes. you're full of love. And so start now. Yeah. Don't wait. That's Don't right. wait. I love that. So I hadn't, I, we just got so into it. I didn't really formally introduce you, Henry. So just okay. so people know, you describe yourself as a human behavior expert. That's pretty profound. So Thanks. for me, what that says is that you are a thought leader mm. in understanding self and then in understanding self, understanding others, and in understanding others, understanding our world. Mm -hmm. 
What yeah. a profound gift that is to be able oh. to serve in that way. You have a podcast. You're like me. You walk into a room and it goes, whoa, well, well, Harry, Henry, how are you doing? <laughs> and you have a tremendous Instagram following, which we encourage all of you to do and follow his podcast. Thank so you. how did you come to that point? Because as you've talked, as you've given talks, I know one thing I know about you is that you and I both came to an, the the growth happened. You and I came to an awareness of how we were living fear based, mm -hmm. and we wanted to live love based. That's right. So share with us that journey, and like for those who are listening who don't know how to even start the first step, what does that look like? Yeah. Thank you so much for, thank you for that. Yeah. You know, my, I, I am literally obsessed with this stuff. Um, my wife laughs cause I'm at the gym listening to like neuroscientists and podcasts and books and anything I could. Yeah. When I was 17 years old, I, freedom is so big for me and, um, truth is so big for me. And someone put a book in front of me and I was like, I started reading the questions like, wait a minute, I can grow. I can change. I don't have to feel caged and stuck. My nickname used to be passive. I would never say how I felt. I would never, I would always want to tippy toe and dance around things. And I was like, man, this does not feel good. I didn't feel good in my skin. I didn't like, it was just so much stuckness, cagedness. I felt yeah. caged, you know? And someone put a book in front. I was like, I can be free. And so I got obsessed. I started reading this book and reading every book I could. And you know, going to every seminar, every certification, everything. And literally like m morning, noon and night, I just, I can't stop putting things down because the second I tasted growth, the second I tasted, whoa, this fear-based life keeps me so stuck and love is so profoundly healing and, and, and expanding and connecting and authentic. I was like, I want to be who I was born to be. I want to live every possible. I want to maximize and juice this life so much. And life obviously takes you through really difficult times. But there was a moment where I realized that a fear-based life is a disconnected life. It's a limited life. It's a caged life. I feel like a puppet to the rest of the world. And I was like, I want to cut the strings and I want to be everything I was born to be, everything God made me to be. And I literally got so obsessed. Like, and I, would, I was like that mad scientist. I would test it on myself. And the second I felt growth, I would test it on a few people when I was teaching or speaking. And then I would test it to masses and whatever worked for the last 26 years, I would grab and put it in my tool case, grab and I would watch. And like you said, it's always, whenever I share, whenever I teach, it's always for me first, I have to make sure I'm applying it to myself because I'm constantly growing okay. and um, I'm, I'm obsessed with this work. I'm so grateful for it. It's made me, it's allowed me to be who I really am and expanding me into who I was born to be even more. And it, it is so powerful to know that who I am tomorrow, my past does not have to equal my future unless I choose it. There are, there are principles that I could heal my trauma with. There are principles I could reprogram my subconscious mind with. There are principles to be emotionally masterful. There are principles to be present. There are principles to walk in love. And, and if I could just measure my life and say, is, am I living fear-based or love-based? A fear-based life will disconnect you from your relationships. A fear-based life will limit you from the impact that you have on the world. A fear-based life will mess up your health because living, stress is another form of fear. And we're not meant to live in a constant state of no. fear, right? Uh, I, the, the impact, the wealth, the success, the happiness, the joy, the peace we feel. But when we can understand the power that's really inside of us and these principles of stepping into that power and into the love-based future that we really want, the love-based present that we want, everything changes. And I am so grateful that I had learned these principles and I have grown to going from being really passive. And I don't say this to be like, look at Henry going from not wanting to share what I think to being on stage in front of 40 plus thousand people for the last five years. Right. Every year I go to Europe and I do these, these, these festivals, do these events. It's like, man, it's like, if I can do it, I feel like anybody could do it. Cause if I could yeah. plug you into my brain, you would be like, holy moly, I can do it. And I've been through some difficult times and it's these principles that have allowed me to, to tr not only get through them, but to transcend that if I was going to go through them, I'm going to grow through them. And there is so much beauty in that. And so for, since I was 17 years old, I have not stopped studying people, studying principles, studying different spiritual teachings, neuroscience, peak performance, confidence, everything you could possibly think of. And I mean, even this morning, I mean, I probably listened to like 
two hours worth of stuff. And I feel like we have, where does someone start in order to go, in order to go after something, you have to, you have to believe four things. First, you have to believe that it's possible, right? You have to believe it's possible to do it. Otherwise, why, why would I go for it? Second, you need to believe that there's a way to get there, right? Third, you have to believe that there's a way for you to get there specifically that yes. I can do that. And fourth, you have to believe that it's worth it. And so if we can just look and say, okay, it, understand that there is hope. It is possible. If Mary's telling you, hey, at 50 years old, I had this breakthrough. Even three weeks ago, Mary, same. I had a breakthrough three weeks ago, right? I, I love myself even more three weeks ago. If, there, if it's possible, if someone else has done it, it's possible for you. And, and listening to this podcast, there's principles that you can do. First, you have to believe that it's possible. There's hope for it. Second, just start moving in the direction of light of truth and let it unfold. And just know this, expect it to be a little bit uncomfortable. Expect the fear to show up because sometimes fear doesn't mean you're going in the wrong direction. Fear means you're going in the right direction, right? Because if you're, if you're moving towards something new, your nervous system is going to be like, what are you doing? We've never right. done this before. That's not what we normally do. So when we start moving forward into something new, expect the resistance, right? But if you could expect the resistance, you could redefine the resistance and say, thank you, body, for trying to keep me safe. I know this is what we did before, but here's how we move forward. And you could decide in advance how to move forward. And you could create a strategy to say, what kind of support system do I want when I'm progressing? Who do I need to study? Mentors, coaches, whatever that is I need to learn to help me navigate this this nervous system to provide safety for myself to go into this next level so I could create safety to feel comfortable to that next level. Just start moving forward in anything. Any form of wisdom applied becomes your power. Yeah. And that's where I would start. Wow. That's, and there's so many incredible things in there. So if you want to guys, you can like stop this, the tape now, go back, re-listen to the last three or four minutes over and over again, maybe take it out, put it in your mantra for the day. <laughs> there's so much wisdom in that Henry. And I think that such a big part of that, like um, realizing that it's nothing's impossible. And that's right. how I end my book is with, I want people to believe that it's never too late. Just look. And I want them to believe that nothing is impossible. And I had a real aha moment the other day as someone said to me, that's how you used to end your cooking show. And I was like, what? That's awesome. And I thought back, I did a PBS cooking show for 13 years. And from 1989 to through 2002. And it's true. At the end of every episode, I would say the same thing. I would say, and if I can do it, you can do it. I love it. And I'm, it kind of dawned on me. That's my same mantra now. Listen, if I can do this, you got this. You totally can do this. Yeah. So I think there's that huge piece of, first of all, awareness that you can change. Yeah. But then, Henry, you said something else. This is the piece I thought was really profound. I want everyone to listen to this. You did the work. You put the time in. You didn't just wait for the universe to distill upon you um, all light and acknowledgement. Right. Because sometimes people think that. You went after it. You read books. You listened to podcasts. You attended lectures. You talked to people. You engaged it. You actively sought after healing. Yeah. Yeah. Not That's a lot of people do it. They somehow look at people like you and think, Oh yeah, he he was lucky, he or whatever, that they're different than you. You put yeah. in the work. Oh man. I I was so I told my wife the other day, I was like, man, I if someone says that I just got here by choice by random chance, it's like I'm yeah. grateful for grace. I'm grateful for the people that have come into my life to influence me. I just do know that like there are moments where I sat on the floor eating beans out of a can. There are moments where I had to face these fears that I had and I would, my nervous system was shooting through the roof of like fear, right? Like cause when you start stepping into something new, um, when I was dealing with my mother's cancer battle, like that was really hard to be conscious and present and aware during that. And a lot of moments like that, when I was dealing with a lot of different hardships in my life, Mary, the one thing I'll, I'll say, which is so interesting. Well, actually I'll, I'll share the story yesterday. I was, I was uh, listening to this pastor share a message, um, and he said, you know, he's like, I was, 
I, I, I saw this YouTube short that said, the only shoulder exercise you're ever going to need is Stephen Furtick. And he's like, I clicked it. And this guy had these awesome shoulders and he's doing a workout. And he said, man, I really want those shoulders. And then he said, I heard the voice, right? From those God saying, um, are you willing to put in the work that he did? Uh, yeah. And then he saw the weights that the guy had on there. And he's like, you could build up to that weight so you could have those kind of shoulders, but you have to put in the work. And if you really think about the way the work has, and then I started thinking about lifting weights as a metaphor. I was like, when you lift weights, you don't want to put so much weight that it breaks you. But if you just curl a pencil, right? If I curled my phone, right? It's not really going to give me some strength, right? You have to right. lean into the resistance a little bit. And even more so, sometimes people bring on a personal trainer, whether that's a friend, a support system, somebody that could spot yeah. you, that's not going to take all the weight away from you, but that's also not going to remove it to crush you. They're going to lift just the right amount to let you grow because the best thing you could do, it's not what you accomplish, it's who you become. Because whatever you're going through right now, it will pass, but who you become from it's going to stick with you forever right? Who we become that. is what stays and who you become attracts what, where you are at that frequency, that level, that energy, that, that being, right? What, when you see Mary, you see the work that's been put in for year after year after year. And you're like, oh my gosh, her business. And oh my gosh, she's, she, you know, just, it's like, no, I can bet. I will bet everything that Mary has put in work to where she is. Yeah. Right. And, and that's the beauty of it is when you step into the work, it's, it's like, you will develop the strength, right? It's, it's not the other way around. Sometimes like, man, I just want to wait for, for the strength to, to, to do it. It's like, no, let's step into that identity now, that behavior now, that belief now, right? I, I, um, you wrote a book. I'm in the process of, of, of finishing mine. And at first I was like, oh man, I'm not, I, I'm not really an author. I'll be an author after I write this book. I was like, wait a minute, but who writes books? It's an author. So I really got into the place of like, no, like I'm going to sit down and work this muscle until I get it. Because what you want is most likely on the other side of your fear and your weakness. And if we could just go, it, it, you know, if I, if, if I, my bicep is, is, is weak, I know that if I go and I do the work, it's going to grow strong. And that's, what's beautiful about it is we get, we get to do the work and please let yourself suck. Let yourself be not good at it because you're probably not yeah. going to be good at it at first. That's the whole point. If you were good at it and if you didn't have fear around it, you would already be doing it. You know, it's crazy. I can think about when I first started going to the gym at 284 pounds, as you can imagine. I knew it would need work. I was not going to short circuit the system because I'm not opposed to weight loss surgery or pills if someone that's right for somebody. But I knew for me, it would short circuit the system and the lessons I need to learn inside mm. to be like 19 years since then. Yeah. And like, I know what it's like to put in the work when in the beginning, I couldn't even walk on the treadmill for 15 minutes. Mm. And so you put in the work. How often? Day after day after day. Because why? The goal matters to you. That's right. That's yeah. right. I, Tony Robbins says, uh, we overestimate what we can do in a couple of weeks and we underestimate what we can do in years. Yeah. And if, if just remember, focus on what you want, borrow from the future every day and put it in front of you so you could remember what is really, really important. And, and Mary, when you were doing that, it's like at first you're like, you're moving, you're like, oh, this, I'm tired, I'm sore. It doesn't feel necessarily good right away, right? Like, man, I just felt like I got my butt kicked. I just went like, you know, some people are scared to maybe even go on social media. You do it and you stumble and you're like, you do that. But eventually you build that muscle. I remember when I first, like if you see my social media, even as I talk now, I talk with so much passion. But there was a moment where I was terrified to go on social media. And I remember I was scared of judgment. And I had done so much work to that point. I just started filming videos. I was like, I just, I just exercised that muscle. And I felt really, really stupid. And I remember one time, it was so interesting. I went, um, I, I, I had this really strong feeling and I went on this, like, just go live. And I went live on social media. And honestly, I felt like it was the worst thing I'd ever said in my life. I, <laughs> I got off, I was like, Henry, that was the worst. And Mary, no joke, maybe 15 minutes later, I get a DM on Instagram that said, 
Um, thank you so much for your message today. I was about to take my life. And because of what you said, I didn't. And it made me realize, man, Henry, show up in your weakness. Show up authentically and with love. And you just, don't, in your weakness, someone's life. And, and he said, you just gained another follower from mm-hmm. India. Thank you. And I was like, oh my gosh, what I thought was the worst thing, what I stumbled in, you know, if, you know, was someone else's like inspiration. And so it was such a lesson for me of just show up day after day and you will get better. And, and your nervous system will realize that you're safe. And I remember I used to be, it was so funny. I used to be scared of like so much of, you know, look, there's so many people with keyboard confidence in the world. And if you're doing it right, you're going to get you're going to get some feedback, right? Like that's just kind of what happens. At some point, people are going to give comments. And I remember one of my videos went like big on TikTok and some guy, I was talking about subconscious reprogramming and some guy says, hey man, you should learn how to reprogram your hair because you know, I had my (laughs) hair with soup and I literally, Mary, where I would have been weird before, I was was by myself cracking up so hard and I wrote back, I was like, dude, that was hilarious. Thank you so much for the laugh. But there comes a sense of freedom when you exercise that so much and it becomes habitual that you're like, oh, I could have compassion on somebody and boundaries. And yeah, some people say things that could be hurtful and my wife's brand is popping off now and people are saying things. And as her husband, I'm like, wait. And I'm like, oh, and my wife laughs about it. And it's just, it's very, it's very liberating when you know that everything can work together for your good. Everything. And if you just walk in that love and faith and hope, and man, everything begins to change in your life. You know, when I first started this journey and I knew innately that somehow this was all connected to fear. Fear of obviously that base fear of never being enough in anything. And I can remember being at the gym and thinking, I'm so embarrassed. I've got to go home. I'm going to go cry. I, 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 I don't want to be here. I pull up the gym. I drive around the gym. <laughs> and then finally I'd park and I would go in. And I didn't realize it until I really started pushing through it. That all those years of what I thought was, or you would make up excuses as genetic or I'm a caterer. What? I like, oh, who loves the, who can love a skinny chef? You know what I mean? All those things that I told myself, you're just German and big boned. All those things kept me looking at the the root cause, though, of fear. Mm. And when I began to recognize those fears in my life, I think that's one of the problems that keep people from changing is they don't understand that, first of all, everyone has fear. Mm. But what they see as just normal stuff in their life, like, Oh, I I really don't want to go to yoga because I'm not very good at it. That that statement in your brain is fear, mm-hmm. is a fear-based statement. And the little things that happen in our life that we choose to walk away from or not engage, stop. Yeah. Stop and just take a moment to look at what does that have to do with fear? Mm-hmm. Yesterday, I had my family dinner here. We always have it on Sunday. And I'm actually moving. I've lived in in Utah County for 50 years. I've been in this home I built for 30. I'm moving to Salt Lake. Whoa, cool. And so my daughter, I'm telling her about, you know, I really don't know if I really should go. It's not too late to get out of this. And I'm like, you know, I love my home. I love it here. Well, you know, this is my family grew up here. And she said, just turned to me and she said, what are you afraid of, Mom? Because her and I, she and I, we work on this level. And I I said, this has nothing to do with fear. This, And then I heard those words come out of my mouth. <laughs> and I just, I broke out laughing. <laughs> Everything has to do with fear. Okay, well, let's process it then. And I said, okay, well, this is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of what at age 70, what does that look like to take out a mortgage? I'll be 100 before it gets paid off. And then I thought, that's okay. I'm living to 105. It's good. That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it really, recognizing those things that that the problems we are encountering have to do with fear. The very first step of recognizing then allows us to shift. Yeah. 
and embrace yeah. love at that moment. You don't have to wait. You can embrace it right now immediately. Mm -hmm. I love that you said embrace it because embracing it means I recognize my body's just trying to keep me safe. My body's just trying to do what it knows to do because it doesn't know the other side of it yet. And when we say the word fear, I think it's important in so many ways to recognize fear can show up, as you said earlier, fear of failure, fear of success, not being good enough, worrying what people think about you, you know, anxious feelings, high functioning anxiety, stress, yeah. perfectionism, self-sabotage. Unlovable. Uh, yeah, you all, know. all those yeah. things. Yeah. You know, but I love that you said embrace it because- we, what you resist will persist. And if I resist the fear, it keeps coming back. But if I embrace it and say, wait a minute, I can understand why you're afraid. You're going to do something new. You lived in this house for 30 years. Of course, you're going to feel feelings about it. And I could recognize that and I could honor it. And it, it's really interesting. I, the, I think it was like two or three months ago, I was just praying and I was just like thinking about my life. And just before that, I had this experience where I'm sitting in the parking lot. I had um, put on this opening ceremony for a big company out here. And uh, we, we had created the speech, this song. It was like a really cool opening for their big conference. And I'm sitting in the parking lot. And I heard the words, it's time to expand your island of fear. I need to do more with you. And I was like, whoa. And I always talk about, okay, if my comfort zone expands, my survival zone expands, then I could have newer experiences because that's where the edge, when I, when I spread the edge, I could have newer experiences. And shortly after that, I was sitting there and I was like, just praying. I was like, okay, what does that mean? Where are the, my limits? Where are my fears? I just went through and started combing through my life. But these words came to me that were so beautiful. And it said, I love you exactly where you are. And I love you enough not to keep you where you are. And it was, it was both. And I realized you can fully accept and embrace yourself now and love yourself enough to expand and grow, and which will only expand and grow everybody around you and serve everything around you. And it was a beautiful moment because sometimes we feel like if I, don't, if I embrace that, then I'm just going to hang on to it. It's like, no, when you love is the transcender and healer. So if I could look and say, I could understand why I felt that way. I would feel that way if I were... Me too. Like, of course. Like, I, if I were you, I'd feel the same way. I was, I've been here for 30 or 50 years. My nervous system doesn't know the difference. I'm going to move into a new neighborhood. Mortgages, all new things. So it's very natural. So we can expect fear, you know, and, and just recognize, thank you, body, for trying to keep me safe. And recognize that I, my emotions are messengers, not dictators, right? My, my emotion doesn't have to dictate me. My emotion is just a messenger. Hey, I'm feeling afraid. Oh, really? What are you being afraid of? Oh, I can get compassionately curious. I can become lovingly self-aware of where I'm at. And then the work begins to happen. Then I get to reprogram and re get my nervous system on board with this fu new future that I want, that I'm creating, that I'm stepping into. And I love that you said embrace it. That was, that's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. You're not going to believe this, Henry. But our time is gone. Oh, well, it's been and awesome. I, I feel like there's, I, I have this running list in my head. Oh, then I want to talk to him about this. What does he yeah. think about this? How, how in the world would you handle this? Blah, blah, blah. Henry, you have to come back. I yeah. mean, that's all I can hey. say is I have so much I want to talk to you about. I want uh, this old woman wants your young male. Brilliant oh, opinion. <laughs> We're on this journey together, you know. I, I've learned so much from you too. You know, Mary, I'll say this. It was so cool to see you flex, you know, because I'll tell you this. When you describe the story, if someone can go back and look at the woman that was driving around the gym scared to sh show up, that walked out and feeling humiliated, that walked out feeling so sad about like, man, I can't even walk on this treadmill. And to see you now at 69, flexing with confidence yeah. and the energy you did that in, that's the same person, but not the same person, but truly the same spirit. That could be anybody else, no matter where you are right now, wherever you feel shame around, whatever you feel guilt around, like looking at the Mary that was driving around the gym, look at her now. That's yeah. when she says, if I could do it, you can do it. She means it because <laughs> she's wrestled. She's experienced it. And I'm like, when you did that, I was like, thinking about the Mary that was driving around the gym. And I'm like, 
people would look at her and be like, oh, she, she, I don't think she could, she never, maybe never even thought she could be here, but look at how much energy and vibrancy and love and confidence that you bring and the fact that you can flex and I could even see your bicep muscle through your shirt. You know, I'm like, go freaking Mary, you know, that's so awesome because it's like, this is, this is gold. This is the example. And if anybody watching or listening, like that could be you no matter what limits you feel. And someone's going to look at you one day and say, thank you for having the courage and the faith yeah. and the hope and the love to love yourself where you are and love yourself not to stay where you are. And that's magic. It's magic. And, you know, when I talk to people, I don't like to say this could be you. But what I do say to them, because then that leaves them the, the out. Mm -hmm. And I do want them to see that it's a choice, but... That this is you. Yes. It's just whether or not you choose it. Right. Because right. what you are, Henry, what I am, what all of us, is inside every single one of us. 100%. And I was doing a breath work the other day. Um, not like a normal one that I've ever been to before. This was not like that crazy panting. I can't breathe. <laughs> you know, this was just very connected to God and the universe. And in that breath work where I literally felt elevated off the floor, I became one mm. with this universe that we are. I saw my smallness. Mm. But at the same moment that I recognized that, the connection to all, I saw my greatness. Yeah. That's so and beautiful. that's what I think that I tell people all the time who will come on this podcast, or if you'll see me comments that I will make on people's social media, it's almost always the same. Mm. It is. Thank you for holding your light so high. Love that. Thank you for shining your light. I, I feel that. like I've been given this big flashlight now that is walking around with me. Yeah. You know, look over here. Look up there. Look at down here. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and you know so that's what it. you do. You shine this humongous starlight onto things. And I want to say thank you to you. Mm, thank you so much. Thank you for being an example of being a young rock star. Mm. Did you know he used to be in a boy band? <laughs> and, <laughs> and being that individual and walking and desiring the light, the beauty that is now yours. Thank you. Thank you for shining the light. Thank you. And I hope a year from now, the beautiful part about it is, uh, and I know we're over time, I'll, I'll end with this quote. I, there's a funny quote that I tell myself. I said, hey, if we haven't in, talked in over a year, allow me to reintroduce myself because my growth game is strong, you know? And it's like, that's the beauty of it. Like in a year from now, hopefully there's a better Henry in our next episode. There's a better version of me. And it's not because I'm, I don't love where I'm at now, but it's like, dude, I get to freaking grow and expand. And so thank you for having me on. Thank you for your light. Thank you for your love. It's a blessing to know you. It's a blessing to share this life with you and journey. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for you and everything you're doing and, every, and who you're being. So thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Henry, thank you for being here. And thanking, thank you for helping all of us craft a meaningful life. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much. Listen to the full podcast today and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and more. Crafting a Meaningful Life with Mary Crafts.